Hi guys, it's Nikki with Nikki Speaks and I am back with another video. But before we get into it, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe and turn on your notifications. All right, let's go ahead and get into this whole blue face, Krishan and his baby mom. So Jaden Alexis recently went on to Megan James's podcast and they had a real juicy conversation. Well, one of the things that is making its rounds on the internet is this clip. Take a listen. So are you fucking a baby daddy like Raw Dog? For sure. So listen, y'all are going to have to explain to me what a ninja have to do to convince y'all to slide up in you raw when you know that he's having unprotected sex with this chick, this chick, and this chick. Like, how does this work out? We know for a fact the world saw him and Krishan having sex unprotected. I mean, she was on him, riding him into eternity, and there wasn't a condom in sight. And now you get on this podcast, you go on the internet, go on YouTube, and you tell the world that, hey, for sure, y'all have an unprotected sex too. This is the nastiest, nastiest, nastiest type of nasty I have ever heard in my whole entire life. Like, I want to be removed from everything that they are discussing, talking about, and showing us, okay? Like, I am literally in hives just thinking about what they are over there doing. <laughs> like, there is no concern for health, hygiene like do you listen 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 y'all just tell me what y'all think about this situation i'm pretty much over it and we're gonna keep things moving so if y'all know like i know stan twitter can be a beast okay and the most recent person that has fallen victim to stan twitter it's bullying and it's attacks is saucy santana so as you guys know Santana has been showing love to Cardi B. He started out showing love to Nikki. He was even on one of her lives. I didn't really buy into the chemistry on that live. A lot of people did at the time, but I did not. There was a lot of shade being tossed around, I feel, and a lot of people didn't pick up on it. Um, Nikki referred to Santana as Santana. He specifically said a few times is Santana, Santana, and he corrected her multiple times only for her to go back even minutes later and continue to emphasize the er in Santana that um, shouldn't have been there. So I felt the shade. I even noticed when Santana said, hey, I'm only, um, I joined this live because my record label reached out to me and they said, Nikki's trying to get in contact with you. I think he was making, making it clear that, hey, um, you know, I heard you was looking for me. Well, here I go. It's not a, oh, I'm clout chasing or I'm starstruck type of thing. So I didn't buy into the chemistry on that live, although a lot of people did. Well, he did go live with her some months back. He even asked her for a feature on the live. And even after then, he's been seen in her comment section asking for features. Well, that kind of died down. And then he started showing Cardi love and, you know, pretty much saying that he would love to collab with Cardi. He even had a song that he thought that she would be perfect on. And that was just last month. Well, also, Saucy Santana and Lotto have formed this friendship since being on tour and since doing a song together. And as we know, Lotto and Nikki did get into it pretty heavy last month, where a lot of fans felt as though Santana was shading Nicki Minaj. They feel like he's been shading her quite a bit, even when he went uh, took to his Instagram story and only sung the lyrics, um, only sung Cardi's lyrics to Tomorrow 2, where Cardi is featured with Glorilla. Now, everybody knows that Cardi's lyrics are very, very controversial in terms of we don't know exactly who the diss is to or which diss is to who, but we know that there is some major dissing in that verse. I got condos in that behead, you know, all of this long a weave down to be, uh, tickling my A crack. That's kind of a play in, you know, kind of dismissing the barb, saying that she copies after Nikki. So listen. For him to be singing her verse, a lot of barbs didn't like it, and they are not letting up on him, okay? Listen, Saucy went up under Nikki's comment, and it was her comment section when she posted for Halloween, her as Cinderella, beautiful, 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 but Saucy commented, 
Thunderella, and then he does the hot hard eyes emojis. Listen, you had people saying stay off her page. You had people saying you were shading. Now you want to be sweet. You had other people saying buy, move. You jump shipped again, jump ship again. So listen, they're telling him stop flip flopping from one person to the other person. You know, depending on what type of gain you can get career wise, they are calling him out. And I think for the most part, I think Santana is just trying to be neutral. I think that he's, you know, just going by the energy that's given to him. That's my personal opinion. I don't think that he's flip-flopping. I think that he's just, you know, being neutral. A lot of people were not neutral initially, in my opinion, when Nikki and Cardi first got into it. They took sides. It's a lot of people trying to take sides. Now it's the, in my opinion, it's the younger um, female rap girls who are just looking for a little clout. But then you have those um, individuals that are just, you know, listen, I'm cool with both of you guys. It has nothing to do with, you know, Nikki. It has nothing to do with Cardi. And, you know, I don't have any beef with you guys, neither one of you guys. So I'm just staying neutral. So a lot of people are doing that. I think that that's what Saucy is doing. Um, that's just my opinion. I don't think he's um, flopping from one um, one artist to the other. And I don't think that it's necessarily clout chasing. But you guys let me know down in the comment section what you think. And we're going to keep things moving. So anybody who has been on Twitter knows that anything that goes wrong in entertainment, in life, or just in general, Queen Naja is blamed for it on Twitter. It's the whole I blame Queen Naja trend. Well, it looks like Twitter has given her a reprieve and they are handing it off to Ari's son, Yoshan. So recently they have been on Twitter blaming Yoshan for everything. One Twitter user said, Yoshan snitching on Asian doll and getting her arrested is the only good thing he has ever done. Mind you, they are talking about a child here. <laughs> um, someone else goes on to say, uh, I'm sorry, but y'all blaming Yoshan for celebrity situations is hilarious. And then another person responds, no, nah, because that baby be starting ish. Like that's a whole baby we talking about here. Well, we know that Ari is not going to stand by and let y'all pull her baby name or drag her baby name through the mud. She did come back and say, when I started talking about y'all and y'all kids, make sure y'all remember, we joking. She also goes on to say, that's not funny. When I start saying stuff about y'all and y'all kids, it's going to be a problem, right? And then she goes on to say, one of the girls who was playing, making jokes, N word, be in my DM trying to suck me dry. Should I expose that as a joke? We can all laugh around this beat. I bet I end up laughing the hardest. Listen, I am with her on this. Like, why are we even making jokes or placing a kid in adult situations and then thinking it's funny? It's all a form of bullying. It was a form of bullying when it was I blame Queen Nyjah. And it's still a form of bullying when you go in and say, I blame Yoshan or Yoshan is the cause of this or Yoshan is the cause of that. It's not humor. It's not funny. It's just really sick in my opinion. But you guys let me know what you think down in the comment section. And I'm going to talk to you guys on the next video.